Other interesting business, you have news here. Cure Dr. Pepper to buy Ghost Energy for over $1 billion, marking a huge investment into the energy drink category, which this will also be Cure Dr. Pepper, Keurig's biggest acquisition since they bought Texas-based, I'm sorry, CX is based Dr. Pepper a few years back, which, yeah, they used to be, they used to be headquartered right down the street in good old Plano, Texas, a huge campus, and then they got bought out by Keurig. Those silly cake ups, one of the best inventions, at least, I mean, for that company ever, because, again, that's what they really grew to. And they're doing so well, Dr. Pepper passed PepsiCo for sales earlier this year, which, anecdotally, on I mean, you know, a small sale, whenever I have people over for the interview podcast, or I have, you know, employees and friends over, shoot. I still got, I got black wrap of coffee gaining a little dust in the sh in the fridge almost compared to how much people just want the Dr. Pepper. Now, this article actually comes to CNN Business, which some of us do in business, but interestingly enough, when I was looking at this topic, they actually had a little bit more data than the competition. Now, specifically, this is Azuna. The guy's name is Bacon. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. The writer's name is Azuna Bacon. Bacon? <laughs> it's almost as ridiculous as having, as having a name like Topping. Oh, wait, I partially digress. Now, they say, quote, Cure Dr. Pepper will buy energy drink maker Ghost for more than $1 billion. And here you can see one of the iconic Dr. Pepper cans. It's kind of a little sad, at least to me, because the Dr. Pepper can says established 1885, because I mean, it was an iconic, you know, independent company for so many years, the underdog, and you know, they're bigger, but now they're based in Boston. Well, at least, what's Ben Anfax sound like? Boston? Nah, I don't know accents that well in terms of the Northeast, but that's where Cure is globally based. So, of course, they still have a little office in Texas. Now, going to the specifics, they say, quote, The range of ghost energy drink flavors in partnership with sweet brands like Sour Patch Kids, Oreo, set Keurig up to appeal to a younger audience. The company said in a statement last Thursday, Keurig CEO Tim Kofer said on earnings call that the brand appeals to, new term, Gen Zillions. No, Gen Zennials. Not to disappoint, but I'm pretty sure that's not a Scrabble word. He also said, he said quote, these beverage are, beverages satisfy a near universal consumer need for energy and alertness, which is increasingly relevant in a world with significant demands for our time and attention. Now, this is even more impressive than, I mean, shoot, we've talked about great sales. Ghost net sales have quadrupled, quadrupled over the past three years. I can't even say it. It's, almost, it's that impressive and unprecedented. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, everyone's Shark Tank, which is a great show. The number one thing that kills every drink that comes on the show, every beverage, is the most difficult thing. I mean, it's not the taste. It's not, not even the brandy on the can necessarily. It's all about shelf space. Getting and fighting to get in those retail establishments and the distribution is dang near impossible. And when it is, when you actually achieve that, it's pretty darn impressive, which is why I'm pretty impressed to see Ghost on darn near every shelf in, in, uh, I've ever seen in terms of retail. Now, they also say that this is the biggest deal Keurig has signed off since acquiring Dr. Pepper Stample Group in 2018 for nearly $19 billion in cash. I want to say it's a business blunder of the year, but yeah, it's kind of weak when Snapple decided to put the iconic Snapple drinks in glass from the nice glass bottles with the cool little, you know, snap top with the, the little fun uh, fact on it to going to plastic. Doesn't taste the same. Call me crazy. Now, they say that this move aligns with Keurig's expansion into energy, sports, and ready to drink brands. The company first acquired a stake in C4 Energy in 2022 before partnering with Black Rifle Coffee this year to distribute its energy drinks, which, I don't know. I haven't heard of C4 in a little while. It looks like they'll be uh, acquiring Ghost in two stages, paying, cheese Louise, 900 million, 990 million in cash for 60% of the company in early 2025. They will buy a remaining stake in 2028, according to the statement. The deal includes Ghost, Nutri Ghost Sports Nutrition Business and Energy Drink Arm. Ghost co-founders Dan Liriano and Ryan Hughes will continue to lead operations, according to Keurig. Which, eh, hopefully, they can, we'll see how long they actually stay in charge. Now, they, uh, Mr. Lorienzo says, quote, as we thought, our company, our company's next chapter, Keurig Dr. Pepper's track record for cultivating dis uh, disruptive brands, Similar challenger mindset and shared vision for energy category and beyond made it right home for our brand and team. Which, yeah, those founders are making bank. I, I'm pretty sure they're happy and sad because they know the brands, I mean, they're going to work there for a little while. It's traditionally what happens when founders sell out their business. Long term, it'll be interesting to see how long they're involved. I've been really impressed with Ghost Energy sales. Just, I mean, to me, I'm, I'm a pretty frugal guy unless it has to do with, uh, unless it's food or water. Usually don't buy it unless it's like a, a business achievement or it's for the businesses. And I tried, I tried Ghost once or twice. It's, it's not my favorite cup of tea, as the Brits might say, or as the Texas might say. It's not my favorite caliber of rifle. But it's one of those things where just the price point, I tried a couple times, I just couldn't justify the price point. I think it's like three, depending on where you get it, it's like three to four dollars per can. Which is why I'm actually even more impressed that people continue to buy it despite it being one of the most expensive energy drinks out there. Now, my, I'm a little, 
they said the sales, but I'm a little interested. What's the profitability and vi well, it's obviously viable enough for Kira to buy it, but I wonder what the actual profitability is. Now, granted, with, uh, with bulk, I mean, when it comes to these, uh, pretty much any co-pack or any type of beverage, more often than not, they're actually not making this. It's a, they use a co-pack and they're paying a company to make it for them. And the larger the order, the lower the price per unit. That's one of the reasons there's so few new companies getting into this because minimum orders are so dramatic. I mean, it's so, so high. And the, but that's the only way you'll get to the price point that's even moderately competitive on the, on the shelf. And one of the biggest things about Ghost is they have all these licensing agreements. Like they have one that tastes kind of like Swedish fish, which false advertises. They're not even made in Sweden. They're made in Canada. Ridiculous. They're not supposed to, they don't taste like maple, maple syrup. Maybe they should. But I mean, those licensing deals cost a pretty penny. But it's also one of those, I mean, people are trying to buy more and more energy drinks. I mean, traditionally, I mean, fun business fact, the most successful penny stock, I'm pretty sure since the dawn of time, is Monster Energy Drinks, which ironically started as a healthy juice company. But then they got into energy category and then famously Coca-Cola invested in them and now it's part of their portfolio. And then PepsiCo's, I would say the best known one is probably Rockstar Energy. I think those are, and then of course you have the third outlier, the third biggest one I would say being Red Bull. But I mean, Ghost keeps going, growing more and more. I'm, I mean, it sounds like they're just going to keep going to the moon. Do you think the sales will continue even in this tight economy where people are trying to pinch pennies and save more and more? And have you ever had a Ghost? I mean, per, personally, I, I don't really like the carbonated taste of it. I I think the last caffeinated beverage in a can that I got was probably, was it hilariously named, but it's called Monster Rehab. And I think the other one used to be Rockstar Lemonade. So like the uncarbonated ones that only have like 20 to 25 uh, calories. Though it has most ingredients most people can't pronounce and Lord knows what they actually do to you. But yeah, I mean, just to me, the price point, I just couldn't get over that. The, one, or, they take, one or two flavors taste okay. I think, what was it? The little, the little Sour Patch Kid one, the blue one tasted all right, but... Personally, I'm not a big fan, but shoot, the free markets reward them. They're doing great. So, out of curiosity, are you a fan of Ghost? Are, are you surprised they sold for this amount of capital? And then do you think it'll be a successful long-term partnership for Cure to expand their portfolio? Or could it be a business blunder where they just don't integrate properly or sales start to crash? Let me know in the comments because, as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, try to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. It's a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.